I'm into guys who are into girls who are more feminine than me. Okay. Interesting. What is yeah. that about? What's at the root of that? Because I think they're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if a guy's not into me, I'm like, you are correct, sir. <laughs> oh. with stand-up comedian Jordan Jensen. So happy to have you. That I always forget to wear makeup or nice things. No, I love. I actually love that you walked in wearing camo for hunting. Yes. Yeah. Real f- tree. <laughs> well, podcasting should only be audio, but right. this is I the just times forget, we live in. And like I go to LA, like I just did Amy Weinshank's podcast and she just, you know, she had beautiful and I- Sarah Weinshank? Yeah. And we look, oh. and we are next to, what did I say? Amy. 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 I said, I'm not familiar with Amy that? Weinshank's yeah, like, work. I Amy Wine- say, it's like Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Amy Winehouse, same thing. Every time I'm next to her, I <laughs> that look would like, be shit. Sick. Cat- if I you did crazy. Amy Whitehouse's podcast. Dude, R.I.P. That is a bad. That was a bad loss. That's, it yeah. was. She's a. She's a bad bitch. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. But yeah, I always forget, and I just was at the park rolling in mud with my little puppy. So. That's why we, I think that, that that's your appeal, though. Like yeah. part of it is like if you tried hard in the same way that other female comedians were trying, like, like I mean, this is a compliment. It feels like not a compliment, but like it wouldn't work. Just show up as who you are and who you authentically are. It's so much better. People recognize it. Yeah, I can't. I've tried one time I wore lipstick and (laughs) I went into a potluck that all my friends were having and a kid that I know was just like across the room was like, are you wearing lipstick? And I just started p- punching the shit. I just was so embarrassed. I was like, shut the fuck up. Aww. So I don't wear it. So like if you show up to like Aww. a date and you're, ch- and you're trying, no you've never been no. on a date ever? Uh, I showed up. I went on a date the other day because my therapist forced me by hand. And it was, <laughs> nice. it was, um, I wore a turtleneck. Okay. Okay. Which was the most feminine thing I owned. A turtleneck. A black turtleneck. That's the okay. most. I don't have dresses. And then That's fine. I, <laughs> but I had a Carhartt only. A that's Carhartt a, turtleneck? No, a Carhartt jacket. Oh. So that's my winter coat. So I don't okay. have. And, or I'm sorry, I have 12 of them, but they're all Carhartt. Right. And so I just looked like I was like a real estate agent for like cabins. For that, like you know, real estate porn cabins. is really hot. So that could have been very attractive oh, to your date. I need to get into that. Real estate porn or yeah. real estate? Or oh porn? no, I'm not watching porn. Porn is, okay. I'm against porn. I've decided I'm against porn. How, what made you arrive at that decision? I just, I think it's, I think it's really bad for dating. I think it's bad for relationships. It's bad for it. When I watch it, I like compare myself and sometimes mm-hmm. it's helpful. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, my tits are better than that, you know? <laughs> but other times it's just like, I, you know what it is? I really, really hate the, the um, role that the, the feminine in it. I really don't like I, type of That's why I had a, I was, re, I was really into porn for a while and I just couldn't get past the use of women as an object. The object. The things. gagging is like, the now, gagging, that's yeah. not even just a category. It's like, if it's a blowjob video, yeah. she is Always. throwing up. Yeah. She is so like, annoying. which I get is hot. Like I actually do get why that's hot Yeah, because you can actually, if you hear them gag, you can probably feel viscerally the tightness of the throat in mm. your mind. Mm-hmm. But oh. I'm also just like, there's like tears coming down. I'm like, can yeah. we? Wow. Let's mellow out. It just dawned on me yeah. that that's why gagging is hot because your throat constricts, not because it's the guy's like, my dick's so big, she's going to barf on it. I think it's, it's both. both. Yeah. Okay. But I think the noise probably, like, you know, when you're blowing a dude, if you make yeah. any noise of struggle, they're like, yes, because that's it's true. true. I yes. was blowing a guy yeah. this morning and that happened. And <gasps> yeah, I was, I almost got PTSD because uh, I've thrown up on it. The last time I did it, I threw up. When well, we you, were in the shower. Wait, when you- It just was punching the back of my throat and it couldn't take any more punches. And yeah. it just came out like a frozen entree, just like fucking, oh, but we were in the shower. So, that's you know, good. killed the mood, which is fine. You wait, know. you threw up today or one time recently? Um, a couple months ago. It's awful. It's yeah. the worst feeling in the entire world. You're only good as your last blow job. So this last one, I didn't throw up. So that's Nice, good, good yeah. job. <laughs> wait, you've thrown up during a blow job? Yeah. Really? The acid reflux thing? I I'm throw not up trying if I roll over enough. on my stomach after eating too much. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I threw up a little last night in my mouth because well, I was so hungry that I binge, I like ate like power bar to go to sleep and I rolled over on my stomach. I was like, whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
The only time I, I mean, the m- one of the most recent times I threw up, it was because I ate too much and then I went to the bathroom, th- threw up at a restaurant and then came back and ordered dessert. Nice. It was sick. <laughs> Accidental bulimia, let's that's go. That's like, a, that yeah, rolls. that's Gilda Radner and Jane Curtin's vibe. Uh, yeah, it was not SNL. purposeful, but I really wanted churros and I was like, mm. well, my body, my body helped me out right here. I've tried being bulimic when I was younger. Couldn't do it. No? I would just binge eat. I had a like, four month stint. Nice. Way to go. I can't do it. It's control. I don't though. have much of a gag reflex. I, I really oh. like I don't like I'll gag and a little bit will come up, but it's never I can't like make myself barf if I drink too much or something like that. Oh, OK. Yeah. Mine's it's too hard. Easy. It's really hard. I where took Kratom you? once. I was trying you? to puke. And- oh, God, Kratom. <laughs> I was with so Mike weird. Roland and he was like hel- helping me and I was like, I feel really bad and I need to make myself. So I was just taking bigger and bigger objects and trying to make myself puke. And he was like. <laughs> Uh, st- so that one still's not doing it, huh? And I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> um, but what were you saying? Where are you from? I feel like Ithaca. you're from Philly. Oh, okay. Ithaca, you have a Philly yeah. vibe. Really? Yeah. I think probably just because I'm affiliated with Ian. Oh, maybe. <laughs> and he's maybe got that's a Philly why. vibe. Um, I'm from Ithaca. I'm from like, you know, the I'm from- The woods. The, yeah, the woods. That's nice. Do you actually hunt or do you just have no. that shirt? Oh, okay. I never kill an animal. Okay. Um, Oh, that's sweet. I'm really animal. I Me hate too. all people and I love every single animal that Ditto. exists. Yeah. yeah. Um, Even a bug, a bird. I, I hate love killing birds. bugs. I hate killing cockroaches. I know that's crazy. No, I, I saved, a, I, I was walking from a spot in the rain um, on, yes, on Saturday and a worm was in too mm-hmm. much water and I picked Aww. up the worm and I put it um, in the, in the dirt, like in yep. the cemetery. That's Cause nice. I was like that worm, I don't think that worm can get out of there by itself. Yeah. No worm, it's, but. Yeah, <laughs> he can just so you know what the really? water. He seemed to be struck. I like let I let him do it for himself for a couple minutes, really? and he didn't seem to have the wherewithal. Wow. Yeah, because I I don't like uh, yeah. getting involved with nature if they can do it themselves. But it just seemed like it wasn't working out for him. Yeah. So it really is a testament to how much people have their head up their own asshole at all times. That like animals. I would much rather be in the company of any animal than a person. Like it's, I I often ponder that and go, why is that? It's because animals are present with you and they're just, they don't want anything from you. They're just there. It's nice. Yeah. They're so, they're super. Also, I'm realizing now that I have, I just got a dog and it's like the way, the, the way people interact, like unless you're in Manhattan, but in Brooklyn, when dogs interact with each other because they're approaching each other, like, hi, hi, hi. It makes you say to, it makes you go to the person. You're not like, get away from me, bitch. You're like, right. hi, hi, yeah. hi. Right. right. Like, Cause you're like, yeah. you're oh, watching hello. two beings interact in a, in a, in a good way where yeah. they're like, we sniff, we check and now we play. And it's, and so when you're interacting with people, it makes you way less of a piece of shit. <laughs> because you're like, I literally have evidence right here of how two people should behave when sure. they interact. Right. But yeah, I've always Courtesy. been, my dad was like a vegetarian, super, my whole family is like insane animal, animal people. And I, I always was like the one that was like, you guys are whack, just chill. And then I was like, all right, I gotta. Then right. when you learn like makeup gets tested on animals and then you learn how like chicken is the life of a chicken before you eat it. And you're like, this is now I'm eating your bad juju. I don't want that. I know. Every time I take mushrooms, I'm like eating meat being like, this could just be my own arm. This could Mm -hmm. just might as well be my own arm. This is crazy. (laughs) But yeah, it's a, no, I don't hunt. I would hunt. I would try it. I have Alaskan friends. I would try it and eat everything. Yeah. It's like if you're going to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not really like a fan of like skiing. I don't really like sitting in the cold. Cold sucks. I, I don't, don't like, the cold like it. Yeah. When I was really fat, I used to love it. I used now, to be fat. Huge. How fat were you? To well, I was probably one ninety in seventh grade. How tall? Are you? You're kind of tall though. I wasn't then. Really? No. Oh, you sprouted late. <laughs> Your height yeah. came late. Yeah. Also, all my friends are taller than me, so it, there's something wrong with. There's something wrong with upstate. Something it's like, in the water like, in Ithaca. But it's like Canada. You know how they're all like trees? Yeah. The yeah. more north you go, people just are way taller. All oh, my man. female friends, anytime like I bring a pack of them around com- comedians, they're like, Jesus, what's going on? Yeah. Redwood wow. trees. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the uh, what was I talking about? Used to be fat. Oh yeah, I was fat. That's my favorite personality type. I'm very intrigued by used to be fat. Those are the, those are the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just something, a lot of comics are used to be fat. Yeah. Yeah. It's what, what would you say is the main um, takeaway of somebody who was overweight and then not anymore? Like what, what is it 
with your psyche or with your. There's a fundamental feeling that I that if left alone to my own devices, I will transform into a monster. Mm. <laughs> Therefore, oh. <laughs> people who used to be fat are very much. Um, they're they're really fun to be around because they're like. They're like, just stay interacting with me because if I'm by myself for a second, it'll get really, really rough. <laughs> oh. So I'm just going to entertain you and be around you so that we can be best friends and then you'll love me and then I won't have to be alone in a room where in which the darkness will <laughs> Oh, ascend. hell yeah. I mean, which I still am. I mean, I still have a horrible food addiction, but it's like, it's. I was also on so much medication as a kid that I- Is that what made you overweight or is that what you took medication I, to get? What happens is if you take, I was just looking at it because now I'm on Prozac. I mean, I've been on Prozac for years, but it the more Prozac you take, the more kind of um, slightly dissociated you are. Huh. They're, That's why everybody's not depressed, but they're also not happy. They're not depressed. It's great. I mean, yeah. it is. It, it's, you don't really change who you are. You just don't get- like, like if I tell myself not to eat, that's an obsessive thought, right? Like you're going to temper, you're going to control your diet. Yeah. But if I'm on something that says, don't, you're not freaking out. You don't have to freak out about, about anything. I'm just going to hit dopamine a little bit more easily. Mm. Like I'm not going to have the uh, obsessive thoughts of, to hold back. I'm just gonna be like, why not? Why not? Why not? And then you, next thing you know, you're huge. <laughs> so wait, is the Prozac for ADHD, for obsessive compulsive disorder? What is I it for? I take it for OCD and for Interesting. depression. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, because I have OCD too, OCD. and I've never, I didn't know that you could take Prozac for OCD. How severe is your OCD though? It seems like a lot. Crippling. Crippling? Oh no. Oh like, yeah. What, what are the, what's the thoughts that happen and when do they happen? Oh, I mean, that when I was a kid, it was like, I couldn't touch any of the doorknobs in my school. Thank God Damn. I went to like a hippie school. I get that. Yeah. There were people that would help. But people, <laughs> my thing growing up was I thought people, so say we met right now and I was in high school and one of you said, um, one of you said, I cheated on my boyfriend last night. Okay. Or I hate my mom. Okay. And then you, you said, can I have a sip of that? Or can I touch that? I would think that your personality where you're mean to your mom or you cheat would rub off on me. Oh, and I knew wow. it wasn't true, but oh, okay. so then I would leave the room and everything on me would be contaminated because you might've touched it. Ooh. And I would have to wash everything with 10 cups of soap. I would have to Fuck. take a steaming shower. That's and, invasive. Yeah. No, this resonates a lot because so even now, like my, my OCD is a lot more under control than it used to be. But like, I hesitate to like someone's Instagram post if they recently did something that I find to be like- Dude, Instagram? Ethically bad because I feel that like it will it. rub off on me. Instagram, I have uh. to, I have to, dude, this is really fucked up. I've never said this out loud. Say it. If I'm scrolling yeah. and about to put my phone down, I have to, if, and I end on a comic who I think sucks. <laughs> I have to end on a comic who I think is good. <laughs> Like it, Instagram I get this, does you think do this shit. You yeah. think it's gonna get on you? It's like it's a contagion that doesn't actually exist, but then in the OCD mind, it does. That's really funny because sometimes I'll just ha I'll have things and I'm like, is this a quirk or is this OCD? I've literally called other people with OCD to ask them, is this an OCD thought or is this just a Corinne Dude, thought? It's the, hard. The dog like <laughs> is a puppy, so she'll poop on Aww. things. And I have the amount of times I call my best friend, being like, okay, two wet wipes. And there's nothing there, but sh do you think I should take it? You know, and she'll be like, that's completely sufficient. That's fine. You know, nice. she's been saving me my entire life. But I used to do this thing where I couldn't cross a crack if I had a neg if I had a bad thought. Yeah. The cracks uh, and, sidewalks and sidewalks are hard. Ooh. Yeah. They're, if that's I had difficult. a bad thought. Break your mom's back. That's that's saying it haunted us. My life. Yeah, I very playfully was like <laughs> stepping on all the cracks. No, haunting. My mom was I, rough. I was obsessed about my mom getting hurt. Yep, me too. So I heard that. That is definitely what it is. Mm -hmm. And then I would just, uh, my best friend Brianna would be like, if I say sugar plum, that means no matter what you're thinking, you get to move forward. Oh. So we would just be walking and I oh, would stop. And, and I'd be like, eh, and she'd be like, sugar plum. And then I could come. So then I ended up with me calling her and she'd literally pick up and be like, sugar plum, hang back up. And I'd be like, great. <laughs> what That's a good nice. friend. That's a great She's friend. And then OCD chose her as the oh, contaminated no. person. Didn't talk for a year. A because year. you thought she was contaminated? It just chose her. Wow. I knew it was happening. She didn't do anything. Her. So it has like an entity. Because because you were saying you wow. logically know that these things are not true. But so, but you can't, that logic is not enough to overpower you not doing it or not obsessing about it, right? The, the OCD logic was she has always been, I was always like the fat one and she was a really beautiful one. And then boys started liking me. And I thought that if I was, if, if she would touched me, 
that the only reason they would like me is because she had touched me. Whoa. So I slowly started pulling away. And then after a year of, it was like very difficult year for both of us. I was like, it was OCD. And she was like, I know. And oh, then immediately really good became friends. best friends again. Oh, yeah, she's the best. Wow. The best. She didn't take it personally. No, I mean, so, she, yeah. Something like OCD, I imagine, is so invasive. Like you can't, like how does it affect dating? Oh, I mean, that's why I'm still on Prozac because I tripped balls on acid once and was like, I'm going to deal with this OCD. And, and, and I like, and I went into a trip for like an incredible amount of hours that was like horrific and also really good. Mm. But by the end of it, I was like, the reason why I have OCD is because I do not like, I don't, I'm worried that we don't know who Jordan is. I could be somebody who stabs somebody or stabs myself. Uh. And I'm always obsessing about how to keep this unified sense of self. And then in the acid trip, I was like, oh, I am just like, I'm like an amalgamation of genetics and also all the choices I've made and all the Mm. choices I've made up till now have been Jordan and that's who she is. And you can trust that person. Like you can kind that's of- You're not a sociopath, yeah. Or I'm not gonna be on a roof and jump off. Like that's the right. big OCD right. thing that you're right. gonna like. So, um, but now I'm on Prozac because if there's, I mean, I have crippling depression also, but if there's in a relationship, it'll be like this. I mean, I it'll be like, um, it, it's like, so say we hang up the phone and you're like, all right, I'll talk to you later. Um, I, I, I'll just be like, Hey, do you, are you like mad at me? And they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. And I'm like, okay, just double checking. You're not mad at me. And they're like, I'm not nope. mad at you. Right. Not and I'm like, okay, you. but you're, are you saying that? Because, so that's happens where you're mm. like, I need a certain sentence to be said and you can't oh. let that happen at all because that like totally erodes any relationship. It's a way right. to get someone to get mad at you real fast. Right. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Unless or I mean, I imagine with you. like yeah. your best friend, like if you have, so I think of the people in my life that I no longer talk to because they were so difficult to deal with. Yeah. But then I'm like, now that I zoom back, I'm like, oh, this is what was going on. If I would have just known that, I wouldn't have taken it personally. Yeah. So it seems like you have good communication with like at least that one best friend is like, she gets it. It's not personal. Yeah. So that's really, that's nice. You can feel seen and heard. But in relationships, it'll get, you'll get addicted to the hit. Mm. Like you get like, like you, you'll, you'll have to, then every time I call, if it doesn't end that certain way, I will mm. have to get it the next time and the next time. So the only way to deal with it, like I still have one tick where if I, if I take my pills at night, I have to drink a huge amount of water or else I think I'm going to die in my sleep. And <laughs> the only way I could get rid of that is to not, is to take one sip of water and, and go, to go sleep. to sleep. Yeah. And that's and impossible for me really, right now. Really? But if I did it, I would, it would, that would be the step to move past that. Tech. Right. So but immersion not, therapy. Immersion. I would literally just lay awake and not, yeah. Have you ever, mm. like, did you have, I know a lot of personality disorders or like mental things can be, can be traced, its roots can be traced to some, usually a childhood thing, but sometimes not. Uh, does OCD have roots in that? Like, like, or are you just born with it? I think you can't, I think it has roots. My personal opinion is it has roots in childhood. I think that if you, I think that you create a a structure of rules for yourself if nobody gave you one. Mm, Yeah. So I think that if, if you're just kind of left to raise yourself, you're like, I I think I have to tap this three times in order for something bad. So you feel in control. Right. Like you're going somewhere and doing something right. Like I'm being a good girl today because I'm doing the, the, all the beep, boop, beep, boop. And I also think that it's like an overactive imagination it's a it's it's usually it's usually not like it's also a it's a it's a snowball effect so like I remember when I was little my dad was like don't let the dog in your room he'll shit in your room Hmm. and I remember closing the door and then being like did I close the door and going back and closing the door and then going did I close the door and that was when it kind of started Mm. so if right then a parent had been like no you don't we're not doing that Mm. you closed it walk away that would have but there wasn't any like they didn't catch the signs and once they did, they were like, well, we just have to help her. We'll mm-hmm. take her to the, I mean, not my, my, my dad was like, this is ridiculous. But my mom was like, all right, let's do the 10 cups of soap. Like, huh. and then a, one therapist was like, we have to do exposure therapy, bring in some contaminated items. And I was like, I'll see you in hell. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> Are you insane? That would ruin my life. I mean, I couldn't even, she like, I was like, you think I can touch the bag? They've already been like incinerated, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is, it is. And then I went to college and I, and I did exposure therapy by just starting, I bought all new things. And anytime I met a contaminated person, I would be like, hi, nice to meet you. Touch my hand. Okay. Oh, right. What is a contaminated person? A cunt. 
Oh, like a mean person. Like, like when you don't want to get person. their essence on you. Yeah. I see. That yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I was like, oh, I want to do like a past life regression on you or something to figure yeah. out if there's deeper roots to this. But mm-hmm. that's, that's a woo-woo. That's a woo-woo option. <laughs> that's, yeah. I don't know. I've never thought of my, I mean, it'd probably be a boy or an animal. I don't imagine my past life was a woman. Yeah, this could be your first life as, as a woman. It could yeah, be. And that's that. why you're, you feel like <laughs> you might struggling. stumb something through. Yeah. I feel like it's it's good. It's a good time to feel like you're yes. kind of just starting as a woman because it's so cool to be like non, non-binary. Against yeah. the grain. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then everybody's like, are you non-binary? And I'm like, no, I'm just a bad woman. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a insufficient you know. But you do, you seem to like, you still do well. You have boyfriends and stuff. Like men are attracted to you, right? Yeah. It, and, or, and women or? Well, are yeah. you straight, bi <laughs> or straight? Okay. Straight, unfortunately. I know. But I feel oh, like I it must be like tiring to ha- keep having to tell people that you're straight. It's super tiring. <laughs> yeah. It's super tiring. And it's also like, I. it makes me angry because I think that- it's it, it's almost like being like you're utilitarian, therefore you're gay. Is like right. no, mm. I don't understand that. But the I chick also who does stuff. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and I'm just operating like a man. Like I was raised by basically two men. My mom uh. is the most, the least maternal, most masculine uh, person, okay. and my dad was like a cowboy. Wow. So and I'm like I'm just doing that what they do, and then when I try and do female stuff, my Feet hurt, and I and I don't know. Dude, high heels. I mean, it's insane. My feet hurt too. I bought a pair. I have a pair of Alice and Olivia high heels that I I haven't worn in years, and I tried them on my house just for shits and giggles. I fell over. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck do women put themselves through this? It does look really hot, but it's like absolutely not worth the pain. I'd have to numb my legs yeah. to be okay with going outside in those shoes. Luckily, I figured out that if you can just go full, if if you are self possessed in the masculinity, like Pamela Adlon kind of thing. Oh, I love Pamela Adlon. Then you're fine. You just have to like, you you can't, it's when you try and cover it up that it gets a little (laughs) Yeah, you might as well lean into it. It's it's, it's something unique about you. So like, when's the last time you wore a dress? Wow. (laughs) Did I go to a wedding at some point? (laughs) Oh, I went to a wedding. I wore Converse and a dress. Okay. But I had to wear the Converse. Right. I can wear a dress if, if I can, I can do it. It just has to have be punk ish. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? It can't be yeah. roofy. Yeah. Um, in college I could more, there can be a farmy dress or like a punky dress, but it's, I, uh, it has to be very, nothing can be uncomfortable. I can't be like. That's wise. I mean. Yeah. It can't you know? be. Because then why I get be hostile. Then I'm like, why am I, just because I'm a woman. I have, uh, totally. And then I'm just growling at people in a dress. So so what kind of guys do you like and what kind of guys are attracted to you? And they could be the same thing, but they could be different. Guys that are attracted to me are the people who are like a little simpy yeah. because they want <laughs> yes. a dad, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And I'll be your dad's son. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like they're a little bit like uh, poetic. Oh, I um, love that's I love that kind of guy. Yeah, that's what usually goes for me. I think there's a little bit of I I have the masculinity that they're lacking. Mm. Um, and I also think there's a like romanticism around um n- like being androgynous together. That's mm. typically. And what I'm into is like guys who are really like withholding with emotion and very nice. Yeah. I'm into like guys who are very like, I don't, I'm not into this. I'm into guys who are into girls who are more feminine than me. Okay. Interesting. What is that about? What's at the root of that? Because I think they're right. You know what I mean? Like, if a guy's not into me, I'm like, you are correct, sir. <laughs> oh, so but you don't keep trying to like, like, so it's not something of like, I'm going to conquer this, like meaning like, I'm going to get you to like me. It's not that in any way, because you don't normally go for a woman like me. You go for this ex type of woman. I will try. Yeah. I try my damnedest. Like, what, yeah. so what's, what is Jordan How? trying? Yeah. What yeah. is, what does that look like? Good question. Um, it's not wearing lipstick. We yeah, no lipsticks, no dresses. <laughs> Maybe it's just Jordan having a conversation in her own head and then not telling the guy about it and then just walking by. It's see yeah, what happens. What is trying. It's it's uh it's a uh, like a it, it's like a 
over divulgence. I'll overly, you know, I'll do that. Okay. Or I'll be also like probably if you were two men in here and not women, probably my demeanor would be a little different. I would probably be a lit. You, you'd probably be able to walk in and be like, oh, she's like a little flirtatious. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. You know, okay. uh-huh. but like it's hard for me to do it with women because I'm so allergic to the idea of being gay because everybody thinks I'm gay that I'm like, I'm not gay. I'm the man in the room. Right. So you're That's like, so funny. I never thought you were acting. Okay. okay. I never thought, I never looked like thought of you as gay in any way, but androgynous is the word. I'm like, you just have an androgyny about you. That's yeah. like, and androgyny is so appealing. It's a really appealing Thank quality because it's, it's very rare. It's like a redhead. Very rare. I'm very sick of people thinking I'm gay. It really drives me crazy because if they just listen to you, it's very clear from your stand up that you're not gay. Like people don't yeah. listen to people. Yeah. They don't listen to people. Either. I yeah. love the, I love when people are like, no, but you're gay. Yeah. I know if I was actually. So yeah. Thank you. I have a joke where I say lesbians on the internet are always like, it's not a choice. We're born this way. And then they meet me and they're like, make the choice. <laughs> You know, like, I'm like, oh, dude, I yeah. thought this wasn't up to me. It's also, I have a mom who's 10 times, I mean, we are Gayer similar than you. in the androgyny. Yeah, but she's like, I mean, right now, if we had like a mirror to her, she would be wearing a full nail bag. She'd have a bandana going around her head. That's like nice. she's, She is like a, so I'm very feminine compared to my mom. Sure. Right. Um, but she, uh. Yeah, she. All, I think she would have been non-binary if she was in our generation for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, like recently, she was like, "I you just want my name to be Dylan," and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, <laughs> I can call you Dylan, Mom." She's like, "No, oh, oh, stupid." <laughs> <laughs> she was just testing out the idea. Yeah. On CL, CL she just Landon. liked it. Her name is Cause, which is Whoa. like not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like a. It could That's be fun. either. Yeah, and yeah. either. And she has she has a quality that isn't. She's not like a short haired bull dyke or anything. She has like long silvery hair. She's very, she just is, she is also androgynous. So I really just don't, I never really knew the difference. Right. And, um, well, I love an androgynous man. I mean, to me, Matt Rife is very man. androgynous. And yes. that's like one of my moms. And that, yeah. he looks like just like Donna. <laughs> and that's what I find appe- appealing. Like, I guess he's like traditionally good looking, but I'm like, there's an androgyny there. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think women almost aren't like, recognizing or coming to terms like that. I'm like, no, he looks a little bit like a chick. Everyone, like, yeah, everyone went to high school with the person that was like, I don't know if you're a dude or a woman, but you're hot and yeah. I like it. And it's the best. that's what it is. It's totally. appealing to all, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I know. I always say that my type is David Bowie in the labyrinth. Ooh, oh, like great type. A, he's so masculine. He's so daddy in it, but he's wearing a skin tights. Like, yeah, right. That's oh, very David much Bowie's brand of sexuality is beautiful. Yeah. Big fan. But I'm realizing I am just a personality. It just, it has to be somebody who is, it's a level of like hyper, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like the, they have to be, they have to like be on board with like a super amount of like analysis of every single moment. That's pretty much what I need. A <sighs> passive, somebody who's passively existing. I'm like, I can't talk to you. Mm, but somebody who walks analysis. into a room and like immediately deconstructs the things going on. And Dawson it, from Dawson's Creek. Ooh, right. I don't watch it. I will, should I watch it? Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, he loves, if you're talking about someone who's going to overanalyze a moment, uh, you probably wouldn't like him on the show, but James Vanderbeek now is like great on really? Insta- great follow on Instagram. Okay, okay. And his mom <laughs> died and he talks about it a lot. I like that. Aww. He's a really good grief counselor. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's really good at it. Yeah. But he's like building like things. He like moved out to like rural Texas and he has a really big family. Like they can't stop having kids and he like will build stuff. I like people who build stuff yeah. though. Mm-hmm. I, need yeah. so- I need someone to bring something to the table that I can't do. I can do almost everything, but I can't build stuff. Yeah, I can so. build stuff. A really funny thing happened the other day. I was like, the the person that I'm seeing is also a carpenter like me. Cool. And he was- <laughs> Do you self-describe like, as a carpenter? I was. I was a contractor. Oh, Dude, you working? actually were. Okay. With yeah. a saw and na- it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fucking fun to build something. Yeah. That was my job through comedy. Oh, nice. yeah. okay. I, I only stopped- pandemic. Oh, this is wow. fantastic. Yeah. Okay. That's a very high in high demand job. Oh my God. So, yeah. so you're so away. useful. <laughs> yeah. But she needs a deck. Can you build one? <laughs> Decks are my favorite thing to build. Well, I like, oh my God, that's perfect. Yeah, because I like she, building. Her deck has a hole in it. I wish I had known this when the the wood rot was small because I was really, I really was trying to fix it myself. I was watching YouTube videos and now the wood rot has gotten big and I, I got to just replace is the it, whole thing. Is it <laughs> a part? 
It's like, so it's like, yeah, it like they're a hole created in one of the planks. Yeah. And I was like, I could just replace the plank. But then I was like, I wanted to use that. I forgot what it's called, but like, instead of having a wood deck that you have to redo every year or so, there was that material yeah. that is like everlasting now. Yeah, right. And I just want to invest in a that. tech or a, Yes, the yeah. tech thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you. I mean, you don't. You should replace that. One <laughs> Have you built a deck? Built a, a deck? million houses, houses, decks, oh, fences, cool. everything. Yeah. Houses. Oh, I'm obsessed guys- with figuring out how to build a house. Tiny little house in the wood because so the framing and the plumbing and the electricity. They're all little systems that are so intricate and very. I don't know. It's just fucking nerdy and fun. You just build the house and then you do the other stuff. Yeah. You know, you frame it out. Yeah. And then you the get foundation. the foundation. Yeah, yeah. You frame it out. You do the foundation. Shit. Yeah, and then you get. And then you figure out where you want the outlets and then you have a electrician come in and put everything in. You can do it yourself at a tiny house. So easy. Conduit. Yeah. It's really easy. Oh, that'd be so rewarding to live in a house that you built. Right. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Really cool. It's the best. In, in in New York, I was remodeling like storefronts and stuff like that and stuff in people's houses. And it was so tricky in New York because you'd open up a wall and there would just be like a matrix nest of cables <laughs> that somebody had buried in there that you're like, oh man, now I know that if I... This is like a fire hazard, so now I have to fix this other yeah. 100-year-old contractor's work. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Were there a lot of rats and cockroaches in the walls? No. 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 Really? No. That's good. They run when you hit the wall. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so they were there, smart. but they left. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, definitely. They get left. out of my fucking way. Okay. Yeah. The demo is loud enough that they all leave. I was always wondered that. I, I always was, like, I did a crepe store that I turned into a barbershop. Okay. Ooh. And I was always worried. I was like, I'm going to hit one of these walls and it's going to be Cockroach City. Right. But it wasn't. It was, they're really good at fleeing. Fleeing. Okay. Good. Really good that's it. good. And I don't, it, they, I they also, them. in the middle of the night, that's when they don't flee. So by right. day to day. Right. Okay. Sorry. We we got onto yeah, the deck, we really, but we were talking I about, love, you're the guy that you're dating who is also oh, yeah, into carpentry. He was, <laughs> he was fixing my sink. <laughs> right. Because. He's a plumber too. Yeah. He's, that's it. Yeah. It's like. He, he was doing the sink and then he came into the other room and I had all of his tools and like was putting up this like <laughs> whole thing on my window. And it was, it was nice to, it was just, it was just funny. Cause I was almost trying to not be too like, you, real, you build bro. <laughs> I was trying to not be too like, uh, I, I wanted it. I didn't want to be overly like. I, masculine. I didn't want, I, you know what I Don't mean? Don't dim yeah. your carpentry I light. Know, I know. Don't. And Honestly, I could feel don't. that happening. And, and and it was just funny that he came into the other room. I basically have like safety guy. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's, um, so cool. That's cool though. And it's unique. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever met a woman who could build a deck. I'm, mm. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm, I'm I like, into this. this I is like great. habits that are like very stereotypically masculine. Like I could change the brakes on a car. I grew up That's like great. working on cars. I fucking love it. And I, That's a really so good skill. Fun. I can't yeah. do that. And I yeah. wish I could do that so much. I it's love really cars. fun. I love I, every field I've ever worked in is male dominated. I went to school to be a director. I'm a stand up comedian and I own a baseball card store. These are all man you things. You own a baseball card? Mm-hmm. It's what? my family business. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your family owns it? and Well, yeah. So it was like my dad opened it and then like my mom was like helping him in 1989. And then <clears throat> my dad passed away and I just decided I'm going to take this over. I love, wow. I just love, I don't know. There's something like very fun and challenging to me about like put inserting myself in a male dominated world. Yeah, it's the best. And it's funny because I mean, everyone talks to me like I'm a fucking idiot, but then also men come into my shop to get free therapy and they think they're <laughs> tricking me. How You work in there? Yes, I go like once a week. We're actually closing it the brick and mortar down because it's been for three years. It was always like a temporary thing. Um, but I mean, it has been such an interesting experience. And yeah, everyone was like, you work there. I'm like, well, that's the fun of it. Like I wanted yeah. to own the store yeah, yeah. to be in the store. It wasn't like, like some like keys. money grab. <laughs> yeah. There's easier ways to make money than a baseball card store. But yeah, no, I wanted, I love being in the space with the stuff. Yeah. And I mean, that could also be OCD too. Cause it, I mean, it was like, you know, extending my dad's life, like being around his possessions. Totally. So, I mean, maybe that's OCD, but we're not even going to go into it. It was extremely helpful. Yeah, and that's all I need to know. With OCD, I have that too, where you're just so like precious about everything. And Is your dad it. dead? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. okay. Totally. When oh, did he die? Let's talk about this. He yeah. died, uh, two, oh, I was 23, 2014. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were young. Yeah. It's, oh. Yeah, it's young. Um, he died of a heart attack. He was also a contractor. Mm. So he laid a foundation, laid down. He was a heavy smoker. Yeah, my dad so, too. Really? Yeah. 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 Heart attack? A cardiac arrest. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, he just went to sleep, didn't wake up. Oh, oh he, he died in his sleep. Yeah. Whoa. It was good. It was a good. That's the dream. Go. I know. 
I know. I was very jealous. I was like, you bitch. <laughs> died Pussy from ass fucking bitch. Cozies. Yeah. It's crazy. It was crazy. So yeah, when he died, um, yeah, that also, that does trigger the OCD where you're like always worried about that. Yeah. You know, you're like uh, uh, attached in a way and there's items you don't want to get rid of because of OCD, but well, I was also trying to keep the smell on his shirts and I was like, well, I then you, that. but then you can't, what do you do? Like, I'm like, I guess I could have zip locked them, but I wanted to yeah. wear them, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm crazy. I fucking like, like, this is crazy. I like, uh, he got cremated, but at, I, I asked for a viewing because I thought that that would give good closure. Like we're Jews don't usually do like, yeah, kind of sometimes they don't usually do viewings though. Open casket, certainly not, but I requested it and they'll kind of do whatever you want. And I like literally leaned in like the coffin and I'm like, like I smelled so mm. I could like, rem like I can remember his smell. And I think I did actually create like a memory that I can access. Can you access yeah. smell memories? Can I, can, I can do that with my dad's stuff because I yeah. did the same thing. I was, I was sniffing his, everything he had. So, yeah. and I was, and it, when it was starting to fade, that was when I was start freaking out. And I was like, mm. dude, this sucks. But luckily the thing about the, the nice thing is my dad smells like gasoline cigarettes. Oh, so you can get those and smells. And sawdust. Yeah. So like one of my uh, uh, closest friends, Megan, she reeks of my father. <laughs> so oh. I will just hug her and be like, just give me a second. Just stay right there Don't real quick. Move. Um, so yeah, I can access that again. And uh, yeah, it wasn't like a, a particularly, he just was a dirty dude with who smoked cigarettes. I love, yeah, even when, even when my dad was alive, um, I, I hate smoking myself, like doing the action myself. It hurts my throat a lot, but even like in the winter, I'll follow people extra blocks who are smoking because even when he was alive, I, the cigarette smoke, I found it to be very comforting. It's so comforting. There's something yeah. super comforting about it. Totally. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like the way a guy will follow like a hot chick because she has like a, a nice ass. Like that's me and cigarette smoke. Yeah. I just Daddy. I love it. It's so nice. I totally agree. Yeah, cigarette smoke with a little gasoline. Oh my god, gasoline oh, just I, in general gasoline. smells great. I fucking love the smell. It smells of gasoline. So, good. It's like, it's so good. What is it about? It's I don't weird. know. It's, I have no I idea. I fucking love that smell. We, so I, much. I would like to figure out why why that is so good. Can you, I, Eric? Can you research if there's a reason why people are attracted to the scent of gasoline? Please, sure. <laughs> it's the best. Maybe it just gets you a little fucked up. Oh, that's Maybe. true. I don't yeah. feel mm, woozy, but I love when I'm pumping my, oh. my car with gas and it leaks, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that's good. It's the best. How is grieving your dad? That's a sudden, um, that's a very I, sudden loss. I right? did not grieve. So I mm. threw myself right into comedy. He was, we were super close. So I went right into comedy and I was kind of in denial for a while. Mm. Like I was like, y'all think he's dead. I mean, in my head, like subconsciously. Yeah. Sure. I was like, he's, we know what's up. Like yeah. you guys didn't know him. Like I know him. Like we, he's <clears> fine. Yeah. And then it would, it was, um, I was like, I'm going to move to New York. And my friends in Nashville were like, let's slow down. You like, cause a lot of things were happening. My best friend got paralyzed. Oh my, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. From college. And then shit. She, and I was like taking care of her. And then I, my dad died and my friends were like, just come to Nashville, relax. And then in Nashville, um, I started to start to grieve a little bit, mm. but then it was, it was only like a couple years later that I was like, like just, all of a sudden realized that I wasn't going to talk to him again. And that's when it really hits you. And that's when I was like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, you never, I mean, I don't think it, it's like, I think the grieving like continue, like the other day my sister was describing when she found him mm. and she was oh, just describing gosh. that he was oh, the way he was laying mm. and she did like an impression. Mm. And I was like, and I started crying just because I was like, oh my God, I miss, I, I miss seeing him sleep like that. Like yeah. I know the way you're talking about. Sure. So it'll come in these overwhelming waves where you're like, dude, come on. Like, this is crazy. It's been enough time. Mm -hmm. Let's just your dad. Yeah, man. totally. It's half of you. It's just you hanging grew up out. With him, you know, I can't imagine. Yeah. Or like sometimes, yeah, like he was the dog person. So with my dog, I'll be like, Ugh. and sometimes I just do a thing where I'm just like walking around and then I'll feel a certain way and I'll be like, kind of fill him in. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Kind oh, of I like, fully like just have conversations yeah. with a photo. Yeah. Yeah. Why totally. not? I definitely have conversations. Every time I'm in the ocean, there's a conversation because nice. before he died, he was like, if you're in the ocean and I'm not around, 
I'm with you every time you're in the ocean. Aww, so now when I'm really in the beautiful. ocean, I'm like, what's up, dude? And I'm always crying in the ocean, oh, which is great because well, it's already wet. <laughs> right. So nobody knows. How convenient. It's really nice. Do, do you not like people like, letting like, people see you cry? Is that like a, a hard for you? Some, yes, it's very hard. I, I mean, my therapist has seen me cry so much, but yeah, it's friends never. Really? really? Never friends. Have um, you had to hold it in with friends when you feel crying coming on? Yeah. Oh gosh. I mean, I'm just like, it's, you know, I'm, I'm like, I got it. I got it. But I recently, because my therapist was like, Hey, I don't know. Like a, a lot of times how you feel, like, I know what you're thinking and I know that you're thinking a million things, but like, how are you, you feeling? And so I was with one of my friends recently and he was, I was so overwhelmed by everything. And I thought of that and I was like, I'm just going to like say how I feel. And I just started like sobbing Wow. and I was like, I just am too in over my head. And it was, it was nice, but it, I did, it did make me realize that I'm very like reserved. Contained. Yeah. With my actual friends in a, in a partnership it, when I'm dating somebody, I'm like, uh, I cry too much. Really? Yeah. What yeah. makes you feel what safe? Make, yeah, that's yeah. that's confusing. To, I mean, to Usually me a little bit. Friendships are safer than a relationship, right? That's mm-hmm. what I that's what I was thinking too. So, what makes you feel safer in a relationship than in a friendship? Friendship, I'm like, I'm worried that I um I have to be the one that is. I just, I guess, I get worried that they are going to. There's something. It's like a fear that they will become more attached or something. Like if I cry in front of them. So do you like to keep your friends at a little bit of a distance? Um, I, you know what it is that it, the affection that comes with crying in front of friends, I hate. Like with Brianna, uh. we both know that neither of us want to be physically consoled. So we can just <laughs> Shit, cry. Sorry. I hugged you when you walked in. No, no. Hugging's oh. great. Oh, okay. Hugging's great. It's just when I'm crying, I don't want. Yeah. Just get the fuck away from me. I you. agree. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. And, and uh, the problem with like being, even being sad in general is everyone reacts to a sad person the way they would want to be reacted to when they're sad. Yeah. Even if you clearly tell them, this is the way that I would like to be treated when I'm like, when my dad died, I was like, I just need to be left alone. Yeah. And then I was dating a guy at the time and he really wanted to be there for me. And I go, but that's not what I need. Right. You're not grieving right now. I am. So we need to react to me the way that I want to be, yeah. you know? Are you like a, a bit of an avoidant in relationships? Yes. Oh, really? Mm, yes, yes, yes. So you're like, ew, gross, get away from you, holding me back? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, like I me, I was just like have, taking on a lot of boyfriends and even that language I think tells a lot about how I feel about it. And I, and then, and I would just like have a boyfriend to have one because it felt like, you know, I'm like obsessed with perfection and it felt like, oh, someone who has their should, someone who has everything also has a boyfriend. But I'm like, I hate having a boyfriend. This is purely for like, this is purely like almost like a publicity move at a certain point. Wow. Like, I hate this. This sucks. What about it was like, like to, it was to stop people from asking me because everyone's so fucking concerned when I'm single. And I go, I, I never been happier. Smiling ear to ear. So happy. So I love I love me so wow. much. Wow. So, 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 what about like all the intimate stuff, snuggling and stuff? No, I miss. N- I don't miss uh, snuggling. I miss fucking bad. Wow. Bad. We, are, we yeah. are opposite people. Yeah. I am like you're a snuggler, not a fucker. I uh, sex is fine. It's just fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's stressful as fuck for me. Why? Sex is stressful. Yeah. Oh, because I'm so incredibly physically insecure because of the being super fat. Oh. Yeah. To- I'm like. If I take my shirt off, all of a sudden there's like a plant in front of me or I'm holding a cat. That's I'm like, hilarious. I brought this cat. I want to see this. Um, yeah, I'm super insecure. So whenever I have sex, it's like, how how do I figure out how to like hide myself and also, you know. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, that sex. would make sex very stressful. It's so stressful. Well, if you to, do it with the lights fully out, then you're not great. stressed, We're right? great time. Then you can actually Yeah, but then yourself. I dissociate because I can't see what's going on. Oh, okay. Because I also like seeing the sex happen. You know what I mean? Right, right. Sure. Well, I yeah, love full hot. light. <laughs> yeah. Full I light love, on yeah. sex. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I'm definitely addicted to like the cuddling and the and the nice stuff, which I don't get, which I don't do with friends. Yeah. But dude, the dog is nice. Dogs oh, are awesome with dog that. helps. A nap with a dog, dog is oh, truly dog the best nap. thing. Rejuvenating. In it's the, the world. We all have dog dogs. Naps. Yeah. Ugh. And then your dog's like a little like heated blanket. Yeah. Like it becomes like a little heated water bottle. And you're mm-hmm. like, this is great. And they're so cute when they sleep. Yeah. They're dogs so are the best. Cool. Puppy dreams. Yeah. Oh my God. But yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. I think I, I'm not an avoidant. I'm super anxiously. Att- I mean, I yeah. will stay in a relationship that I hate. 
forever. Uh, but will you? Um, really? I'm an anxious attachment, but I'll do this thing where if I feel like there's an area of the relationship that's off, I'm like, well, we'll just break up because it's not going to work, right? Like, well, I'm just going to go. And they're like, what the fuck? I do that every day. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I do. It's like, okay, well, it's over then. Okay, yeah, I'm going right, to go. I'm going right. to go. And then if they're like, yeah, it is, I'm like, what? Uh, yes, exactly. What did you yeah. just say? How fucking dare yeah, you? Totally. Endless. But you guys are doing that because so that you can break up with the person before they break up with you. Is that why? Because feel a control. I'm testing. That's the, because like for me, like- There's testing, it's I control. also don't give things a long time to work out, but it's because I, anytime my life is less better than it would be alone or I'm inconvenienced in the slightest, to me, the price of admission stops being worth so it. So you're who I date. <laughs> And that's exactly what I date. I date dudes who are like, you're in my way, get away from me. And I'm like, yes, dad. I mean, oh shit. Boy, right. <laughs> like every, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like it's, it is, it's extremely hard. And I think this gets harder as you get older and more successful, but like to find someone who's making my life better, it's very, that's very hard. I think that anybody spend, I think that anybody who is like you, yeah, like anybody who thinks I'm in the way, if I'm with them, they will make my life better. Right? Like this, this type, how will this type of person make your life uh, better? I mean, because they obviously, I might, they I love mean, you. I do make, just want you to get out of the way. I do make my boyfriend's lives better. Like I, I think even though a lot of them are mad at me now, I think they, across the board, they would answer. She'd made my life better actually. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> I don't feel that way, but that's great. <laughs> you don't feel that way about you. About me. <laughs> No way. I made my life. The guys, I did like living hell. No, I think I that- I mean, ultimately, some of them, I, after I dragged their, them through the dirt, like, yeah, I don't, yeah, uh, that was a long time after though. But like, uh, if you ask them immediately after, did she make your life better? They would say yes. I think that my whole MO is like, what do I do? What do I do? Am I bad? Am I bad? Am I bad? So if somebody's going, I know what bad is. Right. Because I'm being dismissive of you. So if mm. I say you're good, you're okay. Mm. But if somebody's like, I love you. And I'm like, that's because you are, love everything. And I can't even trust that. So you're not the person to follow. Mm. If somebody's like, yeah, I don't do this, but I'm doing it with you. I'm like, great. Then oh I yeah. Can sleep special. At night. yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. I don't trust anyone in any walk of life who loves everything. Right. Yeah, because totally. then you're just not yourself. You, there's no way you could be yourself because like, no one loves everything. Yeah, yeah, like even comedically, like an audience that's laughing at everyone. Like, you know, you, you know that feeling when you're watching a comic who everyone knows fucking is a suck ass hack. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. Audience the audience is loves it. Yucking it up. Oh, it's I, I go on stage immediately. I already don't have respect for the audience. So I try to, so I actually am trying to make them not laugh yeah. so that I don't lose respect for my own act. Yeah, totally. Because I go, <laughs> I go, I, 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 I know that you guys don't have taste. So yeah. we're not, I don't even want to play this game with you yeah. anymore. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I try and make them feel really weird. Yeah. Where <laughs> make I'm them just feel like, like well, that's no. fun. Oh, you guys want to laugh? Well, now let's talk about death. Right. You know? Let's and, have a bad time. Yeah. We're going to have a bad time too. Cause I'm going to teach you a lesson for thinking that person is funny. Yeah. I do the same thing. Totally. I love that. Well, it's, I find it a little challenging to be a comic sometimes because I care so little what people think of me. And sometimes you need to, when you're a professional performer, <laughs> sometimes yeah. it would help me. It would make my life a touch easier if I care. Yeah. So <laughs> like, do you date people that are avoidant? What if you tried that? Um, not that you need to. I have my, my, my boyfriend who I felt probably like was most like me. I dated a guy who was like basically the male version of me, but a bad person. And I don't find myself to be a bad person. Um, he, uh, that was great. I loved that it. Was good. I loved, I loved dating someone who was like me. Yeah. It was really good. We really understood each other. But he was a bad person. It, it turned out ultimately, I didn't know that in the beginning, but yeah. So it's like if you date an avoidant, the problem is they are avoidant and they do things like cheat or or but they just don't want to hang out. But I don't. Cheat. You don't want to hang out either. But like, is that <clears> the debt? Like, why don't avoidance just? Why do avoidance always get caught up with people like me? You know what I mean? It's, why is there that avoidant, anxious? You both. I feel like then you both feel the need to to fulfill a role. Yeah. That's that's just a, that's an agreement in your head that you made a while ago that you're still attached to. Right. I prefer because if avoidant. You, yeah. If you were with an anxious attachment person. Gross. That might be good. Uh, that, would that be good or no? no not good. That, I mean, that would be, I mean. Because then you're like, you don't have to worry about your anxiety fucking up the relationship because they have it too and you get it. So you're probably not pissed off but about it. But then I'm it. very mean. Then oh, I become and then you. <laughs> so you're the yin and yang. So if you somebody will starts being like, I need you. I'm like, yeah, get the fuck away yeah, from me. Yeah, see, that drives me nuts. Like yeah. when, even with, I've had like, um, you know, like girl crush friends. Like I've had friends become, like female friends become really obsessed with me. And like, I've probably never been meaner to a person. And yeah. like, it's, it's, it's not- <laughs> 
And it's not because it's not, it's not like this thing of like, oh, I think you have bad taste. Like I think you have good taste if you like me, but I, there's also just like, I lose respect for people who are like, please like me. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's, I am please like ass. me for sure. Yeah. You, you don't, it's so interesting. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't give off that vibe. Yeah, you don't yeah, come off, you're hiding women, it. But in a relationship, yeah. oh, yeah. it's bad. Do you give guys a spiel before you start dating them? <laughs> Is there a press meeting? They usually, I mean, before I, usually there's like a intense enmeshment in like a conversation that goes down a wild rabbit hole and then they're kind of locked <laughs> and you in. you forget what you're talking about already. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's also like there are a couple avoidant people that I've been with who I just stayed super attached to. And then the people in the interim are like, you know, people that I was like, I, yes, I'm going to do my best to love you. But I uh, fundamentally, if that avoidant walked in and was like, let's go, I'd be like, all right, let's do it. Right. Well, I think the ideal scenario is to get an avoidant or to an avoidant basically is somebody who is self-possessed. I mean, that's the problem with this whole thing. An anxiously attached person is somebody who is insecure and needs, feels that they need another person to complete them. And an avoidant feels like they are complete. Yeah. And that the problem with avoidant is they feel that other people will make them incomplete. Right. Mm. It, so I think you're going to fuck with my wholeness. Yeah. Right? So I think yes. the goal is say you meet, say you meet somebody who feels self-possessed and they push you away for them to then be like, actually you do make my life better. Let's yes. figure out how to make this. Let, let, let me figure out how to not do this push away thing. I think that's ideal. Or an anxious person to be like, actually, I do like myself, but you add to it and not a way that makes me feel like I'm incomplete. I think that's like the goal. Of course. But the thing is the triggers are the problem. Like if yeah. I'm like, if an anxious person puts, if I put too much pressure on an avoidant, they bail and that triggers the shit out of my abandonment. So then I'm mm. freaking out and being like, but you need space. Okay. I'll give you space. That was enough space. We're done. Okay. I'm in your backpack. I'm behind you, you know? <laughs> and they're like, for the love of God. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of, it's just all of the, it, it's just basically being resistant to vulnerability or being resistant to, to your knee jerk reaction to respond to something that isn't actually there to be. So when mm. somebody's mm. like, I need space to be like, that means they don't like me. It, that's no, I'm like the key to bagging and avoidant is actually pretty e easy. It's like uh, l l when they push you away, stay away. And, yeah. then they, and then they go, oh no, why are, are they away? And it, it gives us the um, false sense in our, he our heads that we can then approach at our own pace. Right. Um, and then we'll come back. If we li really like you, we'll come back. Right. But there's the whole thing of within that space, what an anxious person doing oh, is- for sure. Just, 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 just distracting yourself. Up the walls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Distracting, just distracting to yourself. no avail. Tra or like, well, yeah, because I'm an, as an anxious avoidant, it always helps me. I get, I force another crush on, so oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to develop oh. a crush on whoever the fuck is that near me. That can be very helpful, helpful though. Very plates, helpful. Where you're trying very to date helpful. somebody who's an avoidant, so you just spin all these plates with a yes. million other dudes. Yeah, so that, that rotation like, oh, in. I got them. So got that em. you're not too much for any of them. Yeah. And then by the time one of them's like, hey, let's do this, then you can show them that you're too much later. Yes, I'm trying to, or really what the spinning plates are there is to be like, look, other people like me. Which yeah, is like, for sure. So I'm trying to not do that just to, be like, just to be like, yeah, yeah. I am a, I am a, and also- I'm also trying to just say the thing that's going on. So instead of that's being great. like, you know what, I'm leaving to just be like, I'm, f I, I feel insecure that you don't want to be with me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which that's is freeing. Yeah. Which is super freeing. And it's hard for avoidance to not be like, that's gross. Right. I, I, in, my, it's, in my head, I was literally thinking I'd lose respect. Yeah. <laughs> the person, totally. if they said that to me, even though like, I would too. I respect the honesty, but the fact that another person can make you feel that insecure drives me personally fucking insane. I logically, I think that that is correct. I don't think another person should be able to make you feel. The only reason why somebody makes you feel. To give your power away. Right. It, it, but it's like, if I'm, if, if what you do impacts me, it's because I've ascribed to you a disproportionate amount of power. Yes, right. Which exactly. just means that I'm trying to fill some childhood thing. Like yeah. I've decided that because you're ignoring me, you're the equivalent of my parents. And the, yeah. the desire for an adult child to make up for what yeah. happened is, it's like a drug addict trying to score a hit. Yes. It will happen. I know. I told my, We're not I was sleep. telling my therapist, I was like, what about the, what about the fact that I want that? Like I want the feeling of that more than it's anything in the world. Yeah. 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 And and the nature, the 
Jesus Christ, the energy of that is crazy. Like yeah. I, it will drag me out of in the middle of a of an of a of a thing I agreed to totally. year, years ago. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I gotta go. Bye. I'm like, what the fuck? Totally. Yeah, and, yeah. But it is like I was like, I want the feeling of dad protector. Yeah. to my therapist. I was like, I don't want that to be off the table. Like, because that's what you read in like attachment books is they're basically like, that's, that's the, that's addiction is to have that feeling of like, this person is protecting me. And my therapist was like, no, no, no. You pick a person who's ignoring you and go, daddy. He's like, <laughs> you actually Dad, could Dad. meet somebody, fall in love with them, get to a place of safety and then be like, they're protecting me. And I was like, so I can still daddy. And he's like, yeah. But yeah, just then. take a different yeah. route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just no, feeling protected is lovely. Even I like that. Yeah. yeah. Like you, How even do you through do friendship that? or, you know, or relationship. Like yeah. I, I like to feel like people have my fucking back. I'm very into loyalty. That's like the Jersey Italian in me. Yeah. But yeah. So in a relationship, if somebody, so you don't want a relationship to feel safe. You don't need that. You have it in friendships. Uh, I mean, I don't want it to feel unsafe, but it's not something I'm seeking. I, I don't feel safe in front. I feel safe in me. No one's safer than me. So like a storm hits and a tree branch goes through your window and you're really freaked out. You're like, I'm going to, I got this. Well, I mean, I can't fix the the hole in the window myself, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not like someone hold me. Really? (laughs) I'm immediately someone hold me. What is someone holding me going to do? Everyone's incompetent, Jordan. Everyone's incompetent. I I take my dog, move away from the window and call somebody like like you who can fix it. (laughs) But don't you want, okay, what if, what if. Very logical. What if you have, um, what if you get mugged? Okay. I mean. Don't you want to call a dude to be like, I got mugged. And they'll be like, oh, Oh, I want to fucking thing. kill that person myself with my bare hands. Wow. No, I would go, I, go, I would go to the police, fi- like re- you file the thing and then move on with my day. No, I want sympathy and love. And oh. I want- yeah, because you're making up for not getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. I want someone to be like, it's okay. Yeah. You'll be okay. Pat, pat. That's all I want. Yeah. That's why I. So you got to give that to yourself. She sucks. She can't do it. She, she can. Needs, she but, sucks with that attitude. But, okay. So, okay. So how yeah, does this, yeah. how is this working with like you becoming like uh, more famous? Like, so do you think that the people who are your fans suck because they like you? Good question. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. No, to say. Be They're going to like you more, Jordan. They're yeah. going to like, that's going to make them like you more. These cucks are going to yeah, love you. Yeah, these fucking cucks. <laughs> do I think they suck? I mean- to be honest, say a fan comes up and they go like this. They go, hi, I'm a huge fan. I brought him. He, yeah. he had never heard of you. Yeah. My attention gravitates towards that person. That's normal though, because yeah. it's okay. too much energy. For the, 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 even if you don't think the person sucks, it's just too much like thirsty energy. Yeah. And I think everyone, yeah. talk, on a pedestal, everyone talks to the, the friend, the friend. More. Okay. Okay. That's, I think that's just completely yeah, they're normal. Not as thirsty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's thirsty because they don't, they don't know. I think I am, I, I like my comedy and I think that if somebody's like, she's funny, that's true. Okay. But if somebody, um, if somebody knows deeply who I am, that I am a little simp bitch that wants to be held <laughs> and they like me, then I'm like, you're gross. But my fans don't see me be a little simp bitch. So you, you see? like that they like the version of you that you've concocted for them to like. Well, I like her too. Yeah. Right. Because Is that's, that like who you aspire to be? No. I mean, I think I'm honest about being a simp bitch on right. stage. Like I talk about that, but I also am like, as a comedian, this person's great. As a child who didn't get any Mm. attention and is trying to be in relationships with people that it's, it's not, it's it's not fun. Okay. So when a boyfriend is like, I really love you. I'm like, "Mm, why? Uh, But if a fan is like, I love you. I'm like, yeah, I've, I'm, I've been working on that. Thank you. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. So if somebody's like, if say somebody is like, do you want to go on a date with me? I really like your comedy. Immediately. No, immediately. No. Cause I'm like, I'm not, if somebody sees me person. trip and fall and is like- I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> if somebody sees me trip and fall and I you know, hurt myself and they're like, can I help you up? Do you want to get coffee? I'm like, great. You already know that I'm somebody who's just on the ground. <laughs> but if mm. somebody likes me because they see me up on stage, I'm like, that's not, I'm on the, I'm a ground person. Right. You know what I mean? But that's so you have a thing yeah. of like, you don't really know who I really am. And if you did, you'd run kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. I also think it's like, it's sane for that you- 
you to want people to like the real you, not performance you. Yeah. I also wouldn't like it if someone was like, I'm a big fan of your podcast. Do you want to go on a date? That's fucking yeah, that's that's weird. weird. I think it's crazy it's weird. why so many male comics fuck chuckle fuck. Because it guys is, don't because it's insane, insane Jordan. And I let, let them know you're fucking but these insane. Guys, these guys don't need to feel seen and heard. They just want that Ugh. push. Yeah. It's, yes. I almost wish I didn't need that. Yeah, totally. Just getting dick. You're right. They Whoever's just attached have to the dick doesn't matter. It. Yeah. And that's the way to do yes. it. They're not like, I'm attracted to this drain person and I'm going to be with them. They're yes. like, I just want yes. to come yeah. and see an ass. It, feel, it really does feel like it's that simple. I know. I've, I'm I've, fucking jealous. The older I get and the more yeah. I interrogate men, the more I realize- I'm like, damn, you guys really are just that simple. It's just like, they're, they always say the same thing. They're always like, hey, I'm human. I'm like, no, 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 yeah. you're a man. That, yeah. That's not right. human. Right. You know what I mean? It's, like, I don't have that where I'm like, I have to come right now, I think. You know, that's never <laughs> uh, Yeah, a woman, yeah. That, yeah. You know what I mean? Ma yeah. I mean, it might happen like after some buildup and some contemplation and thinking about it, but it isn't <laughs> like, you know what tonight is? It's come night. Yeah, if, I don't, like, get, if I don't come right now, I'm going to be cranky. Yeah. yeah it's not going to be like that. There's an excuse to come. There's like that thing that I find with men where they're like, this is a good... Like, like I have to, um, there's a scarcity mentality around coming. You know what I mean? For With them? men? Yeah. Right. So it's this like- could wait, be my last come. If yeah. somebody offers me a brownie and yeah. I'm not hungry, I will take it because I have a scarcity around, mentality around uh, food. If somebody offers pussy to a man, sure. they're like, right. bleh, bleh, I'll do I whatever it is. I must take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it yeah. might not be there again, which might be biological. They, probably yeah. 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 And do they you, might be right. You're a sex person. Do you have scarcity around sex? Like if a guy, hot guy's like, let's have sex. Do you feel in, compulsed? No, I feel compulsed to not give it to him because he always gets it because he's hot. That's oh, sick, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> no, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> like that's why I don't. I refuse to fuck celebrities. They get it all the time. They'll remember you more if you say no than if you say yes. Yeah, totally. I'd rather be remembered than get the sex. It's a it's a long long term goals, not short term goal, goals. Yeah, I've never have gotten. That's why the the one night stand thing is strange to me. I'm like, this is. You'll just walk away having had sex with me. Yeah, the that guy. That's not great. The like the guy I wanted to have sex with most in the world, and like probably still is the person I would want to fuck most in the world. Like literally, like uh, just like brings me to my knees. I had the chance to have sex with what? him, and I didn't, and that's why we're still in touch. You can't say it. I can't say it. I can tell you privately. It's a celebrity. Okay. Kind of. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's weird when that thing. When that I fuck all the celebrities. Kind of is rude to say, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. So I'll just he say. He is. Yes. He is. Kind of was rude and I apologize. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's right. He's come back. Fuck you more now. Yeah, I know. Come back for more, <laughs> baby. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a girl who met Harry Styles. Did and you fuck him? He tried to f have sex with her and she was like, no, I'm hanging out with my friends. And wow. at the time, that's I was like, sick. That's Harry Styles yeah. is one of the hottest men in the on the planet. Today. I know. I know. Me too. And I forever was like, she's an idiot. And now I'm like, no No, way. because you can no, always kind of like move. jerk off to the fact that you turned him down. Oh, yeah. That sounds sick so as fun. fuck. Harry Styles th thinks about your friend. And if she I fucked know. him. And I'm talking about yes. her. Yes. Well, and like, this I don't think many moment. people have said no Genius. to Leonardo DiCaprio. And we've had, we had a, uh, I had a woman DM me once and said my friend fucked Leonardo DiCaprio uh, and he wore headphones. And then I talked about it and then everybody what? was like, yeah. He wears headphones when he fucks women. Like, I know multiple celebrities. There. I know another celebrity who does that. Which is, yeah. that's so crazy. So it's like, yeah. headphones. no one says no to that motherfucker. And it's like, look, I wouldn't he's even ruined. consider he's ruined. fucking Lito Nardo DiCaprio. Like, yuck. He yeah. wouldn't even consider you. It's not because, <laughs> well, maybe he wants to try on a personality instead of a, 25 year old I think face. I think they get stunted to whenever they got famous. Sure. That which is, is. a It's like an, it's it's an addiction. Rape. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, Thank you for being here, Jordan. That was so fast. That yeah. was great. Yeah. Hi. Appreciate you. Um, that was awesome. Thank you. You're what, a very what good would guest. You, Did you like to plug anything? I have a thing coming out on YouTube. and <laughs> Is it a special? No, I okay. have a special in the works that's going to be out in some months. I'm not sure when, but that's an hour. But all of the stuff that I, that is all about this. The hour coming out is all about bad woman stuff, being a bad woman, insufficient woman. Oh, I love this. But I cut off from that hour, all of the stuff about like suicide, my dad dying, and it's just called The Death Chunk. It's 20 minutes, it's gonna nice. be on YouTube in a couple days. Um, and go to punchuplive.com slash Jordan Jensen for all my tour dates. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, for, thanks for having me. That was a great fun. interview. Being yeah. very, very vulnerable, we appreciate oh, it. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry that it was late twice. 
No, ah, it's fine. It's okay. I'm a late person too. I get it. This has been Guys We Fuck the Anti-Slut Shaming Podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. 